Okay guys, it's me, Mr. Clean. This is definitely my most vulnerable share to date. Hey Bunny Tribe, I am getting super vulnerable today. Okay, here goes. I am gonna get a lot of heat for this post, but I have to be authentic with you. A couple months ago, I found out my wife was cheating on me with this guy. You couldn't even have gone with a brawny guy, Brenda. You had to go for an inanimate object with googly eyes. I can't even. A lot of you have been asking me, hey, Bunny, I love your energy. How do you just keep going and going and going? But I haven't been real with you. Sometimes my batteries run low. Sometimes I just want to shut off. I know my life looks amazing on the outside. I have this sick car. I get Happy Meals for free. But sometimes I feel like a failure. Like just last week, I failed to tell you that if you buy one Big Mac, you can get a 10-piece chicken McNugget for a dollar. I am so ashamed. Not all bright white kitchens, people. Sometimes you gotta post about the black mold. But here's the thing. I pushed through. I found new love. Remember the copper tone girl? Well, she grew up. She appreciates a man who knows how to keep an immaculate kitchen. Or I've been sharing this in the last few weeks. I've gotten so many DMs from you guys supporting me. Thank you so much. You want a battery that isn't afraid to share its truth. And that's me. In fact, the two of us have a deal for you. Buy one SPF 100, get a magic eraser for free. Swipe up for details. Oh, and Brenda, if you're watching, I wish I could magic erase you. If you're like me and sometimes you need to recharge, uh, swipe up because I've got a great deal on rechargeable batteries two for one if you use my code authentic carrots. Love you guys, see you soon. But I've been reading a lot of Brene Brown and now I am not ashamed to tell you to swipe up on this story to find some arches near you. Just putting it out there. Okay, swipe up. Thanks guys. I'm pretty sure that's not what Brene Brown had in mind. <laughs> Hey, this is RKA, and this is another episode of Awkward Marketing. Because marketing your business can feel awkward, sometimes awful. I'll help you make it awesome. Speaking of awesome, for more of these awesome videos, you're going to want to hit subscribe and give this video a like. Vulnerability. So hot right now. Just get on Instagram and post a story about how you hit rock bottom and you're so ashamed, but you dug your way out, and now you can swipe up to buy the secrets for how you can too. <gasps> Is that what Brene Brown was thinking when she wrote Daring Greatly? I don't think so. It's like we're playing this game of business telephone. You know the one from your second grade birthday party? One person whispers something to another person who whispers to another person what they heard. And down the line we go until we get to the last person in the circle and the message has completely changed from what the first person originally said. Yeah. That's what's happened to vulnerability. Brene Brown started the conversation and it got passed down the line and now the message is, tell the world how vulnerable you are. Share your shame. It's good for business. The power of vulnerability has turned into the power of monetizing vulnerability. But hold up for a second, because let's not confuse what's happening in the online marketing space with actual vulnerability. Getting on your Instagram stories and talking about your messy divorce so you can appear relatable and hopefully land more clients yeah, that's not vulnerability. Talking about your embarrassing rags to riches rise to the top so you can sell more spots in your coaching program, that's not vulnerability. Posting pictures of your messy but opulent kitchen to show your followers how authentic and rich you are, that's not vulnerability. Vulnerability is what you do, not what you say. And yes, vulnerability has the power to transform your business even make you more money, but it has nothing to do with airing your dirty laundry on Facebook Live. Let's talk about how real vulnerability can make your business stronger. Number one, vulnerability means doing the damn thing, not talking about it. Recently, I was talking to a friend who wants to start a podcast, and she has for a really long time, but she's holding herself back, waiting until she has the perfect idea or the best production quality. She's afraid if she doesn't have the most transcendent podcast in the entire world, Others in her industry are gonna look down on her and judge her. What Instagram business philosophers would tell her is she just needs to get on her stories and tell the world how vulnerable she feels making a podcast that isn't perfect. But the vulnerability that will create momentum in her business comes from doing the podcast, not worrying about the podcast and how it will be perceived or telling the world how worried she is. As Brene herself says, vulnerability is about showing up and being seen. 
It's tough to do that when we're terrified about what people might see or think. Number two, asking for help. Deep down, there is this fear that if we reach out, we'll be seen as weak or incompetent. Asking for help in the business world feels like we're burying our bellies, saying, I'm not good enough to accomplish this on my own. In my own life, this goes a step further. I struggle to delegate because it means letting go of everything being done my way. So I've kept tasks on my desk that have no business being on my desk because of the fear of being vulnerable to someone else doing something differently or worse than I would do it. This is a business killer. Amy Porterfield talks about this very openly. She's a perfectionist, she loves A plus work, and she has struggled to grow her team and delegate knowing she has to make her peace with B plus work. This is what vulnerability looks like. And it was a game changer for Amy's business. I heard her speak earlier this year and she attributes massive growth in her business to being able to lean in to the vulnerability of being comfortable with work that's less than perfect because she knows that then she's able to do more work and help more people. Number three, being willing to admit that you don't know it all. All right, this one is a hard one for me. Being perceived as an expert feels really safe to me. Hey, RKA, do you know how to do this? Sure I do, I'll just learn it as I go. I have taken on so many wrong fit projects in the past that bled profits because I wasn't willing to admit to myself or to my clients that something wasn't a particularly good fit for me. This is also what vulnerability in leadership looks like. A vulnerable boss doesn't get up at a work meeting and sob loudly about how their life is a mess. A vulnerable boss is able to admit I don't know everything. They're able to defer to members of their team and give credit where it's due. Number four, being compassionate with others when they let you down. Okay, this is another tough one for me. Perfectionists tend to expect perfection from others. We hold others to an impossibly high standard and I am a thousand percent guilty of this. But vulnerability and leadership means honoring the humanity of the people you work with showing kindness, compassion, understanding, patience when they mess up. And this is how vulnerability can transform a workplace culture, reduce turnover, help to attract better talent. And when employees know that they are free to take risks without immediately getting canned, you've created a company culture prime for innovation and massive growth. Fear blocks creativity. Vulnerability makes anything possible. So let's stop this game of telephone right here. You don't need to tell the world your dirty secrets to embrace the power of vulnerability. Vulnerability is not a card you play to increase sales or engagement. Vulnerability is a practice of doing, failing, pivoting, and trying again. As Brene says, vulnerability is not knowing victory or defeat. It's understanding the necessity of both. It's engaging. It's being all in. Oh, 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 oh,